Hello and welcome to the Chapter 6 podcast on Section 6.2. Today we're going to talk about quantized energy and photons. So, quantization of energy. So, this represents a, an important era in physics. Um, in the early 20th century, there was a divide in terms of how energy was, was looked at. There were traditional physicists like Newtonian guys who believed that energy could be cut in half infinitely. And then there were guys like Max Planck who believed that you got to the point where um, you could not break, you could not cut energy in half anymore. Okay, it's very similar to the idea of the atom versus being able to cut matter in half forever. So they kind of, and there was some evidence uh, indirectly that led to the idea of this idea of this of this smallest point of dividing energy. And Max Planck was the guy who kind of came up with the equation and the evidence to show that this was likely the case when you got to very, very small slices of energy. So Max Planck came up with something known as the quantum, not just him but others. And he, basically the quantum is the smallest amount of energy that can be absorbed or emitted by something. Okay, um, the way he figured this out, this was something he did with a simple observation, then with other subsequent experiments. But he noticed, like with flame tests, that these flame tests and metals, you know, as he would watch, you know, blacksmiths work and stuff, the the progression of color changes for like iron, as it was forged into horseshoes and other other forms of metal, that they always went through the same progression of colors, and also the idea that elements. Uh, when they underwent flame tests, would always give off same the same signature uh, uh, types of colors. Led him to believe that energy was being absorbed in dis in discrete packets, which he called quantum. And he was able to actually quantify this the energy of these quantum by using this very simple equation: E equals H V. E is the energy of the quantum. H is a constant, which we call Planck's constant and V is the frequency of the radiation. So what he was able to say is that energy is quantized. In other words, it's it's packeted into small quanta of energy. And what he found is that the energy can only be released in whole number multiples of HV. In other words, um, there are only certain frequencies that were allowable for certain forms of energy. And we'll talk more about this in class to kind of give you an idea of what it, what we're actually talking about here, but the discrete packets were very important. There was only certain ones that were allow, allowable. Um, you know, a lot of people were, were um, you know, were, weren't convinced by Planck's idea, but a fellow that we all know now by the name of Einstein was able to actually apply uh, Planck's equation into something known as the photoelectric effect and was able to apply it to something known as the photon. So Einstein's idea um, was he was able to explain a certain phenomena where certain metals, if you shine a certain amount of a certain kind of energy with a minimum amount of uh, frequency, they would actually emit electrons from the surface. Uh, these metals, when you did this, these are kind of like the ancestors to solar energy. So when you had photons you know, strike a metal surface or radiant energy, electrons would, would, would leave the surface of the metal, okay? And these um, photons had certain packets of energy. So the idea here is that this photon, even though it was energy, was behaving as a particle and affecting what a particle did. And photons, what he was able to show, are also quantized. What that means is that the photons, if you shine more photons, onto the metal surface you get more electrons emitted but they would all have the same frequency uh, no matter how much of that of that radiant energy you you shine on it however if you took another photon that had a different or higher frequency the electrons that would be emitted would have a greater energy than the ones with the lesser frequency so this was an application of, of, of uh, Planck's law it also kind of talked a little bit about uh, the duality of light. Light, one of the biggest mysteries in physics for the longest time was, is light a particle or is it a wave? And so with this experiment and with other ones that came, that followed, 
um, people were able to understand that light has some wave-like properties, but also behaves as a particle in cer certain circumstances. And this is something, again, we'll talk a little bit more about class because it can kind of blow you away if you think about it. And again, what you see here on the right is basically a setup of of Einstein's experiments showing that that um, that Planck's law had actual applications. So how would we do calculations involving Planck's law and Planck's equation? Well, here are a couple examples. Okay, let's say we had a laser that emitted a light with a frequency uh, that's given here. What is the energy of one photon from this laser? And that's what E equals H V allows us to do. Okay, so when we uh, when we plug in these numbers what we'll get is the energy of one photon. So H is constant, so we already have that. And then the frequency was given in the problem. So the frequency of, of one photon of this laser carries this amount of energy, the 3.11 times 10 to the negative 19. Now let's ask, say, ask another question. If this laser uh, contains this many photons, what is the total energy? Well, the total energy, if this is one photon, then all you have to do is multiply uh, the energy of one photon times the total number of photons. So this is how many joules of energy we would get from this many photons from the laser. And we can also go backwards with this. If I give you the joules and I ask you how many photons there are, we take our 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2 joules and we can divide it by the amount of energy in one joule and that will give us the number of photons. Okay, and again, we're going to talk a lot. Oh, we're going to talk about this more in class because I know this isn't. This is pretty abstract stuff, and it's easy once you kind of under get you wrap your mind around it. And we'll definitely try and do that 